It's becoming a tradition to cover Insomniac's titles on this channel, especially when they just came out. We are making a good dent in the crazy amount of Ratchet and Clank plots, but right now Insomniac is well into their Marvel games era, and we have another one to talk about. Spider-Man 2 is culminating all the stories so far and bringing in more elements into the mix. I mean Venom. We got Venom in the house, and that always brings more of the classic story beats from Venom into the fold. Too. Sure, Insomniac has been changing up the story to keep it all fresh, but they've been cooking and serving straight fire so far. On the trophy side of things, they've been catching up. I mean, Spider-Man 1 was a bit grindy, and then Miles Morales learned that less is more and managed to make a better trophy run. But it looks like the third time is the time that they got it absolutely perfect, because for once in the history of this channel, I'm praising an open world platinum run instead of criticizing it or being apathetic. This is it. This is what I want. This is what I want open world platinum runs to be like. I am super excited to cover this trophy run and we have not just one webhead as the star this time. No, we have two. This is... Platinum Hunters, the show where we take a look at everything it takes to get the Platinum Trophy and whether it's worth the effort to achieve it. We got Marvel Spider-Man 1 on the channel, we got Miles Morales on the channel, take your pick. They all lead up to this glorious game here and also subscribe for more content just like this because you might just find your next Platinum Trophy. If you thought the last game's trophy run was smooth as butter, oh, this one is velvety goodness. Some of the best platinum runs out there don't make you feel like you're going for a plat. Spider-Man 2 does this perfectly, and that's because this time all the side content is perfectly blended into the experience. So when you hit the trophy cleanup stage, it's not going to feel like you have much left to do and thankfully, nothing ever feels grindy. You have combat trophies, environmental trophies, trophies for leveling up your skills, and much more, but at least when I got to the end of my trophy collecting experience, it never felt like a chore or ever felt like it's padded. This is the mark of an excellent trophy run and one of the best this year. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean right now and note that I have more helpful guides in the description below if you need extra help. It all starts with the 10 unmissable trophies you will collect across your adventure as both Spider-Men at the same time. I have many good things to say about this sequel, especially trophy wise. But if I could be a downer for just a sec, just a sec, the story is a bit all over the place. And I was a little bit puzzled by this considering how good the story was in the first title. Now Spider-Man 2 isn't void of amazing moments as there are some parts in the game where I literally jumped off the couch and started playing standing up. But I definitely prefer the first game in the story department. But gameplay and trophy wise there's no question that I prefer Spider-Man 2. It's not even a contest, night and day. Now, I can show you exactly with this trophy run as it trumps the first games and even one-ups Miles with a great platinum run. When the main story is all said and done, your next big task is to finish up all of the side activities which will directly get you the superior trophy. We had districts in the last two games and you bet they are here too. For the trophy, you will have to 100% all 14 districts, which is easily done by just doing all the side quests and collectibles. It works a bit differently in that you have to clear the district two thirds of the way to unlock fast travel, but it's totally worth it because Insomniac are technical marvels and they found a way to make it so you can fast travel to practically any block in the city, which is super helpful. 
This game has taken the less is more approach that was in Miles Morales, but modified the formula again even further. Instead of the game dropping all of the one activity type on the map all at once, when you unlock it, the game will give you a few of them at a time and more of them as you progress the story. This is so people like me don't just drop everything they're doing and complete all the side content completely ignoring the story. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. Now there are fewer map markers to deal with because now you have to get up high in the city and see where these side activities are from the sky. You won't even get a map marker until you get close enough to it. This all sounds like it would make the cleanup process more annoying, but you'll see it doesn't in the long run and just ends up making the overall experience better. So let's start introducing the crazy amount of side content this game throws at you and reveal their trophies. Best place to start is local crimes by getting the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man trophy for completing all the side quests on your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man app. Now, when you open the app, all of the requests will appear in it, including the main ones, but this trophy refers specifically to the side quests that have the light blue Spider-Man mask on it. These are the requests, and these will be your standard civilian side quests we have seen before. Sometimes we are stopping dangerous criminals from escaping and terrorizing the city, and sometimes we're finding out who rummaged through this lady's garden. One of those side quests gets its own spotlight and for a good reason. It's the A New Adventure trophy, and it's for helping our friend Howard. Howard is someone we've been helping across all of the games, and it comes to a crescendo here. I won't spoil it, but damn. Who put these damn cut onions here? What the hell, man? Next, we have a trio of side quest lines that will pop up with their own dedicated marker and have a few missions to complete before you complete it and unlock the trophy. Miles takes care of the first set for the Brooklyn Pride trophy, and you need to complete all the side quests for these school students. These are all low stakes missions you complete for students and it's all located on the Brooklyn Visions campus. They will unlock after the 6th main mission and there will be 4 missions on screen now to complete. Then you just have to finish the final mission that unlocks called The Gift to get the trophy. The amazing thing about this game and more games need to copy the homework here is that there is usually a final mission to all of these side quest things or missions that pay off all your hard work collecting something or finishing something. You even get rewarded most of the time with cool skins. Nice. Miles is also solving a mystery of stolen priceless instruments for the My Community Trophy. These are side quests involving a museum exhibit of instruments from past musicians being robbed. What else is new? Like, seriously, if it's valuable, Spider-Man's gonna have to prevent somebody from stealing it. These are the missions on screen now that you have to complete, and it goes by pretty fast. There's only two. The first one will be available after the 14th main mission, so a little later in the game, and you have to finish both. I'm trying hard not to talk about spoilers with all this stuff, but the suit you get as a reward is absolutely worth it. Then, we have the side quest related to the Flame Cult, and you pair up with Wraith to finish all of them for the Crimson Hour trophy. Again, no spoilers, I'm really trying here, but damn, that last mission ending got me hyped as hell. These are the missions you need to complete, and these are really excellent missions. Good to see an old friend as well in Wraith, and I'm glad they are relatively on our side relatively. That's all the trophies that are side quest related and now we can get into the stuff that is more on the collectible side of things. These are generally more numerous especially this next one. We have the grains of sand trophy for a side activity that pops up very early in your playthrough. After the second main quest, in which you square off with the big man himself, now you have to collect all 14 Sandman crystals that were scattered across the city. 
These involve dropping into an area covered in sand, slapping some sandy cheeks, and then cracking open the crystal to help access Sandman's memories. Of course, there is a dedicated final mission to complete, and this sequel understood the assignment. This payoff comes in the form of the 14th and final crystal. Next collectibles that appear are the 23 photo ops for the New York, New York trophy. These start appearing after the third main mission and they require you to find a bunch of cool photo opportunities to show how happening the city is. Sadly there's no final mission for this one, but we are just getting started with these and you will for sure get more goodies as you go. For those last two, you could either collect them with either Peter or Miles, but this next collectible set is for Miles exclusively because it relates to his uncle Aaron, the former Prowler. To prevent this tech from getting into the wrong hands, we have to find all of uncle Aaron's tech stashes and that results in you getting the co-signing trophy in the process. The best way to find these is to get up high in the sky and look for a purple outline along the tops of buildings. Then you just have to solve the puzzle as Miles to access the tech. These are cool and I'm glad we have Uncle Aaron in the game again in some capacity. The EMF experiments replaced the environmental missions from the last time and I found them less annoying this time. Less. You can start clearing these out as Peter for the foundational trophy after main mission 7. We are going to be piloting robotic bees, growing plants, fishing, and piloting a bike through a park that is about to explode. That's fun. Completing 8 of them will unlock the final ninth mission, and then you get the trophy after you complete it. This next activity involves two steps to get the Seek and Destroy trophy. Remember all the different types of bases from the last game? Demon warehouses, fisk hideouts, sable outposts, yeah, yeah, those ones. They're back, but now with Craven's goons. You have the hunter blinds, which are smaller scale versions of those bases that exist on tops of buildings. And then we have hunter bases, which are way bigger than the base types we have seen before and have side objectives to complete, like turning off the power and stuff like that. In order to unlock the hunter bases, you have to clear out all of the hunter blinds in the district first, which might be like two or three depending on the size of the district. It's good that combat in this game is so good because you'll be doing a ton of fighting once these 11 blinds and four bases show up. When they start unlocking after mission 8, it's go time to get this trophy. Okay, now we have the biggest collectible amount in the game considering there are 43 of them to collect. The trophy is called Funky Wireless Protocols and you'll be looking for all the different spider bots around the city. This hunt starts after Main Quest 13 and while cruising the New York skies you may notice a pink aura that's emitted from the sides or tops of buildings and that's your clue there is a spider bot close by. Now these may seem like the only way to notice these things until you upgrade the traversal category in your suit tech far enough until you get the all seeing ability. This ability has the added effect of showing you the locations of spider bots on your mini map which is awesome. As you're swinging by you can just look at your mini map and see if there's that icon there and you'll know there's something close by. You won't have to rely on that pink aura and you can find these a lot easier. The last one you find is special and won't appear until you get all of the other 42 of them. Moving along to what is probably the best activity in the entire game and the best payoff mission, Miles has to travel to each Mysterium to find out who is behind the masks. These Mysteriums remind me of the Taskmaster or Screwball missions because you are ranked like those missions and have different objectives. However, I find them way better than any of those missions before it. You get the first one after main mission 13 and you have 10 of them to complete. Keep in mind that you only need to hit the bronze rank to complete them so unlike past games you don't have to worry too much about how you perform. The culmination of these 
10 Mysteriums is awesome and some of the best the game has to offer. No spoilers coming from me. I also think the implications of completing this next activity are intriguing as well. For the data collector trophy, you have to uncover the unidentified targets by chasing down these bird drones and downloading the information by flying through their slipstreams. Yeah, that sounds really crazy when described, I get it, but these are pretty fun to play in practice. You'll have 9 of these pop up on the map after completing main mission 18, so a lot further into the game. And like the others, you'll play a final mission once you start figuring out what's going on. The final side activity that shows up is the 10 symbiote nests that start to show up later in the game and I'm going to try and be very vague here, as vague as I can. Now you just have to go to each one and clear them out for the exterminator trophy. So these are similar to the sandman crystals but now you have to defend the bomb until the time goes down. That means you're gonna get attacked by waves and waves of symbiotes, so make sure you're armored up with the best upgrades from your suit tech and gadget tech, especially the sonic burst gadget which really messes up the symbiotes here. Anti-venom powers are going to do extra damage as well, so if these nests get difficult, it's best to wait till you finish the story and then do them when you're all beefed up. Since we were talking about hulking up, we got a baker's dozen of trophies to cover, all related to our two Spider-Man's upgrade paths. The main one you need to worry about is increasing your spider level so you can get the amazing trophy at max level. This time the max level is 60 and like the other two games, completing any main missions or side content will net you various amounts of XP. I literally got to the max level even before I completed all the side activities, so I wouldn't worry about this trophy too much. You can get XP like crazy, especially completing the main narrative. The other trophies are really not a worry either, but they require more various currencies that you get from completing different side content. It's not as wild as Spider-Man 1, but you will still have city tokens, hero tokens, tech parts, and even rare tech parts to find. The tech parts in particular are important, as you not only spend a lot of these compared to the other currencies, but there's also a trophy called Resourceful for collecting 10,000 tech parts. You again collect them by doing side content, but it's not going to be enough and you'll need to farm some by looking for blue tech stashes sitting on random buildings and as well my favorite thing in the world, crimes. The crimes give you a pretty great amount of tech parts and don't take too long to do them this time so it's worth sprinkling them into your activity regimen. You are going to find out you'll always be short on tech parts while you upgrade your gadgets. And for the to the max trophy, you have to purchase the five upgrades for each of the five gadgets that you will get over time. Each upgrade makes the gadget even better by increasing how many you can use at once and making them more potent. Remember that sonic burst gadget I mentioned earlier? Upgrade that bad boy. The tech investment is about 5,000 parts and that doesn't include the other three currencies you need. So you're not getting this trophy until probably the cleanup step. It will be the same story for the suit tech upgrades except for the cost being significantly less. And that made me gravitate to these instead because of this. But for the fully loaded trophy you will have to purchase all of Spider-Man's suit tech upgrades. You have 8 upgrades in each of the 4 categories and remember to beeline through the traversal category to get the all seeing upgrade for the spider bots. The tech part cost is only about 600 so bang out these upgrades, it's a lot easier and a lot cheaper. Now we have the coolest thing in the entire game and they went so hard in this department to the point where you don't even miss the ones that they didn't bring back from other games. We have the knitted out trophy to grab when you collect all of the available spider suits. Now I know the digital deluxe version gives you more suits for both web heads, but Peter and Miles both have 34 base game suits each and that's good enough to get you the trophy. 
And the best thing is that the suit styles which change the colors of some of the suits are not required for the trophy, although I ended up buying them all anyways. So really, you just have to wait until the end of the game to be able to purchase them all using suit tokens as they unlock at different times in the story. Plus, some suits come from the side content rewards, so this might be one of your last trophies to unlock in the end. But damn is it worth it. Man, the choices here are excellent. So many good ones. Black Suit Spider-Man from the Raimi Trilogy. Mwah! Chef's Kiss. Now we'll move over to combat trophies, and the combat in this game has been greatly improved this time, especially having the symbiote on you really extends what you can do to hurt baddies. We have a trio of combat milestone trophies here, which I'm going to pop on screen right now. The spider arms and symbiote abilities are for Peter, and the evolved venom abilities are for Miles. For the first two trophies where you need to smack 100 enemies, you will get them at the start of the story and you can start working on those trophies from there. But Peter won't get the symbiote till later in the story so it makes more sense that it's 25 enemies instead of 100. No matter what, you will have the abilities at the end of all of this and can keep working towards these milestones even post game if you haven't got the trophies already. Miles will get one combat ability that really sends cheeks flying in all directions, and that's the Reverse Flux. It really packs a wall up, and for the Overdrive trophy, you have to use Reverse Flux to pull six or more enemies together simultaneously. So wait till you have a bunch of enemies around you, and then use Reverse Flux to pull the lot of them in. The Symbiote Nest we discussed earlier is a good spot to pull this off no shortage of enemies there. I found out lots of people are actually forgetting about this trophy while they play and having to do it post game. It's the slackline trophy for the new webline tech. You can just make your own purchase to web enemies in stealth and that's cool. But for the trophy it wants you to stealth take down 25 enemies from these web lines and people are forgetting about it. Easy enough trophy, just make a web line and stealth kill them. Or sorry, take down them. My bad, Spider-Man doesn't kill, he doesn't kill. He just slams them really hard into steel beams, but they're not dead. They're, they're just very heavily concussed, but not dead. The problem with this trophy is that people have been forgetting to do these and then they run out of content to do the trophy later. Simple solution. Some of the crimes will require you to beat up thugs and you can just put out a web line and get the stealth takedown that way. You're not screwed, you're good, don't worry, nothing is missable in this game, remember that. Aside from the combat trophies, we also have a few trophies for web swinging around the city or using the cool tech like the web wings. Now we have the hang 10 trophy to get by performing 30 air tricks in a row without touching the ground. Whoa, that sounds like a pain even if you're getting up to the highest point in the city. Yep, that's 30 tricks or more without touching grass. To do a trick you just have to hold the square button and move the right analog stick in any direction. Now you can do this, as I said, just get up high, jump and perform tricks, but you definitely won't chain 30 tricks before you hit the ground. So you'll need to swing around to keep you in the air and continue to pull off more tricks. I recommend swinging until you launch yourself, fit in 2 or 3 tricks, and then repeat the process over and over again. You can keep doing this until the trophy pops as long as you don't mess it up and break the chain. But if you do break the chain, you'll probably get this next trophy by accident. You'll be dishonorably awarded the Splat Trophy if you attempt a trick and fail to land it. Smack! That's gotta hurt. Even with experience and spider sense, I'd imagine even Spider-Man would mess up a flip or two and slam the ground. Good thing, I'm indestructible. Then our last trophy requires web wings and knowledge of the city. For the SOAR trophy, you need to start from the financial district and fly your way to the Astoria district using only web wings. That means you're going from the southwestmost district to the northeastmost district in one glide. 
Good thing the description says wind tunnels are okay to use it because I don't know how you would do it otherwise. Before you even attempt this trophy at all, make sure you have maxed out the traversal category of the suit tech as it upgrades your web wings capabilities. Then to get the advantage on this flight, start in the top part of the financial district and pick a street with a wind tunnel going through it. Then you will want to hit one or two updrafts along the way and start heading in the direction of the bridge that takes you to the other side of the map where Astoria is. There will be another wind tunnel flowing across the water, so take that one all the way through. Then you will get off of that tunnel and find another wind tunnel going north and that will take you all the way to the beginning of Astoria and get you the trophy. It will have to be one deployment of your web wings the whole way there and you cannot use the air boost abilities or it will cancel it out. It will take a few tries but once you get the hang of this, especially the flight part of it, you'll find that this trophy wasn't too tough to get. We have three more trophies left in this guide to grab and then you've banked another Spider-Man plat for your collection. And that trophy percentage of the plat is getting pretty damn high already, it's crazy. But don't forget to hit the like button if you've made it this far into the video. Let me know what other Spider-Man games I should play in plat. And yes, I mean the older ones. Let me know if that's something you guys want me to do. Okay, let's take this web-slinging trophy ride home with a trio of very short environmental trophies. Very easy. Let's take it on home. First one is called Home Run, which takes place at the Big Apple Baller Stadium right beside the fair going on at Coney Island. This one is simple. Start at home plate and run each base. Not web swing, run them like a normal person. The spider runs home and wins it for the New York Stankies. Go Blue Jays! Next, we are heading to a familiar place located on the northwestmost part of the map. We've been there at least once in each of the other game's trophy runs, and we're back to visit another grave for the You Know What To Do trophy. As Peter, you have to visit Aunt May's grave which lies right next to Uncle Ben's, and we honor her for this trophy. Then the last trophy of the guide is just a somber, and it's for the Just Let Go trophy. For this one, you need to play as Miles and find the science trophy that Miles and Finn, Miles' friend, and the Tinkerer from the last game won together. It sits on the church that's located on the south side of the financial district, and it will be sitting there on a ledge. All you have to do is interact with it to get this trophy. That's two downer trophies to end this platinum run, but hey, it's time to celebrate. We got another plat, cheer up. Now we have three Spider-Man plats and maybe there's room for more? I would also love to have a Wolverine one in there. Can't wait for that, but now I'm just being greedy. If you have web-winged across New York City, Witness Craven's Last Hunt, unlocked a ton of awesome suits, completed a ton of great side quests with great payoffs, stopped 18 inches of venom, and collected all the trophies. Congratulations! You will be awarded the dedicated Platinum Trophy for Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Considering that the original PS4 Spider-Man game got DLC with the city that never sleeps, which by the way we covered on the channel and you should definitely check that video out, maybe this game is going to get DLC as well. There is a good chance. In fact, I think the chance is very high. There's also a good chance that the team moves on to a smaller expansion game like Miles Morales, Hopefully, with Venom as the main focus, I would love that. But ultimately, it's a toss-up, really, as I can't read Insomniac's mind, but I'll cover any DLC content that pops up for this game in its own New Game Plus video, so stay tuned for that and check the description to see if I've updated you and given you the link for it.
Overall, this is easily the best Platinum run of these three games. Way better than the first game, which was unnecessarily grindy because of the crimes. And a refined improvement over Miles Morales, which was already a good Platinum run. Thanks to the careful attention to blending all of the side content in with the main game, this experience felt very natural to Platinum, even though the first game took roughly the same amount of time. The experience is just so refined, and I mean it when I say that other open world games need to take note of this. Even the games inside of the PlayStation family of studios need to take note of this. It's also masterfully done, and I think this Platinum run is definitely going to be one of the top Platinums on my list this year. And in due time, you'll see that half the player base is going to get it. So great job, Insomniac. I mentioned it already. Bring me Wolverine, I'm ready. Plus there will most likely be DLC so I'm ready for that too. Of course I will get those trophies and bring them to the channel, but now I'm also thinking about going back and getting the older Spider-Man games like The Amazing Games or Shattered Dimensions and Edge of Time. Decisions, decisions. Either way, it's more webhead content for you guys. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this Platinum run. It's way better than the last games. And yeah, I was a little dour on the story not being as good, but still amazing experience. You can definitely expect this game to be on my game of the year list when I do it at the end of the year. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about this game, whether it's trophies or the story or the gameplay let me know what you think and of course tell me if you want me to play more spider-man games i hope all your web slinging trophy hunting expeditions go incredibly well and peace out